Hey guys, I'm doing this. Kevtech here, bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over interview questions and answers. Whenever someone gets a job in IT, I tell them, dude, girl, gal, give me all your answers and questions and I'll make a video on it. And I, I will reply to that questions and answers by making my own version of it. And I'll show you how I answer these questions. Obviously, if you're new, make sure to know do, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. So today is all about interview questions and answers. Um, and I'm going to read the comment. From two days ago, his name is Low Key, like Low L O W Key, like K E Y, uh, six five seven. Thank you for your videos. They helped me prepare for my tier two support role interview. Here are the questions I was asked. Maybe you could do a video on them as well. So I always do interview video questions. I have an interview playlist here. I'll leave it below in the description of this video, or make a post on it in the comments so you guys can look at it. People have gotten jobs just watching my interview video questions. Some videos are an hour long. Some are 10 minutes long, some are 20, some are 30 minutes long. So you probably should take a look at that before you message me or email me or ask me a question about, oh, what kind of questions would I be asking if I go for a job into you? Because maybe I have a video for it already, if that makes sense. So definitely look at my videos before you message me or ask me a question because I may have a video on it already. All right. So uh, question number one is what is uh, actually question, is question, number, question number one. I'm not going to answer just like. I want to answer this question. The difference between help desk and service desk, like it depends on the title, job, responsibilities, everything is the titles are misleading sometimes. So like it could be any, you could be doing anything. So I'm gonna to go to question number two. What is what is BitLocker? So BitLocker is an encryption for hard drives. You actually could encrypt your hard drive using BitLocker. It's just that no one, if someone, God forbid, someone a real life example, um, someone has a laptop, it has BitLocker on it, they happen to leave their laptop. Um, somewhere by accident, while they're at the airport, they go to the bathroom, they leave their laptop unattended, they walk away and then, you know, go to the bathroom, come back, and then now it's gone, now it's stolen, right? So what BitLocker allows you to do is allows you to encrypt the hard drive. That way you cannot grab that information from that hard drive and you cannot grab that data. So you encrypt that hard drive, you're able to do that. Not only, only does it do that, but it has a, uh, a key that you encrypt it with. And usually we store that in Active Directory or we, we store that on, on a on a, uh, like a storage backup solution, like, um, I don't know, like uh secret server, right? Like, cause I use secret server in my previous job. So we would store our, our encryption keys there. So depending on the company, that's how they, they use BitLocker. That makes sense. So it says here, what is the protocol for sending emails? And you know, there's, there's different types of protocols. There's SMTP, which is simple mail transfer protocol. There is POP, which is post office protocol. And then there is IMAP, which is Internet Message Access Protocol. And you know, I, each protocol does different things depending on what you're trying to do. Like SMTP uses to send emails. Uh, and then um, POP or Post Office Protocol used to access electronic mailboxes. Uh, and then POP3 allows you to download email from the server to a local device, then delete them from the server. And then IMAP is used to access electric, electronic mailboxes especially when synchronizing an inbox with other device. And IMAP is used for desktop email clients like Outlook, uh, Apple Mail, Thunderbird, or Spark. So um, the stuff that you need to know if you're answering these questions. So it's good information. Uh, the other question is, what is the protocol for Active Directory? And that will be uh, LDAP, which is Lightweight, Active, uh, lightweight Directory Access Protocol. And um, the different types of versions, versions 2 and versions 3. And LDAP are used to communicate with directory services like AD and allowing systems and applications to talk to AD. And LDAP is often used with Kubernetes for authentication. So that's basically what it is. And then Kubernetes, you know, is a network layer protocol used to authenticate trusted devices across the network. And then, yeah, there's a lot of information there, but that's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. And they actually want you to go in more in depth, you can, but that would be the answer that I would give. Um, and then the other question is, what does, what does the command uh gp update do so like if you have group policy in place gp update allows you to update those policies um depending on how your policy is set up through your group policy management so and he said i made a video on and it's a comment section so yeah i made a video on this before i have videos on that um next question is how do you set up outlook on your mobile device so every every company is different so that question is hard to answer because you could either download the because I have, I have my phone here, right? 
you could either go in here and download the Outlook app. Like I have the Outlook app open right now on my phone, right? And then you could just sign in with your username and password and you're, you're good to go after that. You don't got to do much after that. In some companies, like, I'll give you, an, I'll give you a life example. Like this, this iPhone, right? This is an iPhone. Um, you have to log in with um, with a scan QR code that your company provides to you or an email that your company provides to you, right? And basically when you sign in, when you sign in, it's going to ask you like, um, do you want to trust this device? You install next, 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 Tr install the certificate for mobile device management, you install it. And then when you're done with it, it's going to ask you for your username, your password. It's going to ask for your password for your app ID as well. So you can start downloading all the apps and then you have all your emails uh, on top of your emails. You have your apps as well. So, um, if you set up Outlook on a mobile device or Outlook on mobile, it could be using the native app, could be using a third party like Moz360, using the default Outlook app by downloading the, download, download, downloading the Outlook app on your phone, whether it's Android or iOS, and you just put your email address and your password and you hit sign in and that's it. So it really depends on the company. And I mean, I, I talked about this too. So DHCP is a dynamic host configuration protocol. That would be the definition for it. And they want to ask you more information on it. They can, and then DNS is domain name server. Um, and then the other question is user calls and tells you they cannot access a shared folder. Folder, how do you handle it? So, if someone cannot access a folder, first I want to see if they're the only ones having that issue. If it's just them and it's isolated to them, then we know that with the troubleshooter on their computer. So, they may have to um, unmap and remap that folder. You may have to run GP update force, like the command that they were asking for earlier what they're in the in the previous questions. GP update force, sometimes they have a folder that is not mapping or is not taking um, updates to the domain controller. That helps a lot usually. So like I had someone that couldn't see a folder or couldn't access a folder. And I opened up the command line and I ran GP update force. And it asked me if I wanted to log out. I logged out, I signed back in as the user. And then that folder worked for them afterwards. So really it depends on the scenario but that's how I would handle that situation. And it says, how do you tell a user about a problem they're facing if they are not knowledgeable in IT? So again, this goes back to being good with social skills and good with uh, having good soft skills. If you're working with a customer and they don't know what the, what the hell is going on, or what's the, <laughs> uh, that's to say that right answer, like, what is it happening, right? You wanna be super non-technical as possible, depending on the issue that they're having. For example, if someone didn't reboot their machine, I'm gonna say something along the lines, listen, your computer is like like us humans. We have to go to sleep. This computer hasn't been turned off for almost a hundred days, which is why your computer is super duper slow. So that's the reason why it's slow. You know, the computer, just like us, needs time to rest, which is why we reboot the computer and which is why we shut down the computer. And putting it to sleep is not gonna shut down the computer. So you have to shut down the computer every single day. Otherwise it stays up. And if it stays up, it's gonna slow down your computer. Because it's like us, it's like when it's not human, but it's like us where it needs time to rest. So I try to be super non technical as possible with all my answers and questions when it comes to talking to an end user. And yeah, that's it for me. Hopefully, uh, this helps you out if you watch any of my videos. With that being said, I hope you have a good day and a good Saturday. Take care, peace.